My name is Simon and this is how to build a racing car. Previously we finished the front of the chassis frame for my Formula V. In this episode we are going to finish the chassis, adding the side impact protection, the members rear of the firewall that connects to the drivetrain, and attaching all of the various brackets and mounts before finally sandblasting and painting the chassis in nice matte black. The rules allow the side impact protection to take the form of either Kevlar laid into the bodywork on the sides around the driver, or aluminium panels attached directly to the chassis. I chose the latter as it would have the benefit of stiffening the chassis in addition to making the car safer for the driver. I was already confident that the chassis was stiff enough, but the added weight might as well work for me in some way. Since I used round tube, I wasn't going to be able to just rivet the panels directly into the chassis as a lot of the other cars do. I would need to weld mounts onto the tubes onto which the aluminium panels could be riveted. I had all of the panels and mounts laser cut, so there was no issue with fitment. Like when I was welding the frame of the chassis, having this rotating jig was very helpful for welding the side panels on. Being comfortable makes a huge difference to the quality of the weld, especially for someone without a huge amount of experience like myself. You will notice that I only welded small sections at a time, maybe 50mm or so. I'm doing this to spread the heat around the chassis to reduce the amount of distortion or the amount of pre-stress after I complete a weld. It took an entire day to weld the mounts on, but I was very happy with the outcome. I did a quick test to make sure that everything went together okay. Next up were the mounts for the front suspension. This was necessary to distribute the force from the suspension H-beam into the chassis. Without it, the chassis would be crushed by the H-beam tubes just from tightening the bolts up. It also serves as a small expendable crumple zone which will hopefully protect the chassis if I were to have an accident. These were made from a combination of plate and tube. I started by simply making each part required for the assembly. To make the round supports for the edge beam, we bent thicker 3mm steel using an oxy torch and a hammer. First we bent it into a slightly smaller radius, then we hammered it to shape on the H-beam itself. After the mount was complete, I quickly capped the ends of the chassis and tapped the holes into the chassis itself, the H-beam mounting bolts. While I had the H-beam on the chassis, I welded together the transponder mount. This holds a beacon used by the circuit to tell when the car has crossed the start-finish line. I fit it as far forwards as possible. The further rear it's mounted, the later the circuit realises you've completed a lap, or more importantly, finished a race. This mount was built from thin steel that I had laser cut. There was no need for it to be so elaborate, but it's so easy to draw things like this in SolidWorks than have them laser cut that it was fine just to show off a little. We used a small sandblasting cabinet to clean the scale from the surface and prepare these smaller parts for painting. Finally, we gave them a couple of coats of paint in the paint booth to finish them off. Back to the chassis itself. Next we needed to connect the engine and gearbox to the chassis. I had to make two inserts on the lathe for the lower rear mounts. The transmission subframe would bolt onto these. The biggest challenge with this was actually just getting the position of the engine correct. You start to appreciate how many degrees of freedom there are when you're trying to position something perfectly and to make it even more difficult, there weren't many convenient points on the engine to mount or measure from. We worked for most of a day getting the position correct before I tacked in the mounting members. I worked with the philosophy that I would just try and cut out degrees of freedom one by one. That way I only needed to get one measurement perfectly correct at a time. We started with the lowest members. These set the position of the engine rearwards. The upper members were next, setting the angle of the engine. The lower triangulating members went in after that, which fixed the vertical height of the engine. The other members were added one by one after this.
We had a used engine block and gearbox casing for this process as it was much easier than working with the entire drivetrain assembly. It was safer than working with the precious race engine and gearbox and there was less to get in the way while we worked. Now though we had to mount the actual drivetrain to make sure that it fit correctly. First we connected the gearbox and engine together. Then we bolted them into the chassis. One of the cross bracings had to be moved slightly to miss the intake manifold, but apart from that it fit perfectly. Lastly, four small braces were placed at the front of the engine to provide a little bit of extra support. From here, it was onto the smaller mounts and brackets. The front damper mounts were first. These were made from laser cut steel that essentially gasseted a corner of the chassis and provided a standoff onto which the damper could be bolted. The bell crank mount was welded off the car as a small assembly. Having laser cut parts makes fabricating this way quite easy. The accuracy is very good so it almost seems like it puts itself together. Once the assembly was welded together I just had to place it onto the car and weld it around the perimeter. I took the chance now to do a trial assembly. I really just wanted to see how it looked and went together. It was a nice payoff after so much work. And I've got to say, I was pretty pleased with how it was going. It wasn't just for fun though, we made a mock-up of the fuel tank and tested that it worked within the chassis, which allowed me then to finalise the design and send the drawings off to get laser cut. There were only a few small amounts left. This was a simple boxed section with two holes for bolts to mount the bracket for the steering column. These were the mounts for the dashboard which also provided secondary mounts for the bodywork. The mounting plate for the pedals and floor which will also stiffen the chassis. One of the last mounts to go on for the rear roll hoop brace. The design of this mount was dictated by the rules as was the design of the brace itself where it connects to the roll hoop. The other end doesn't get defined beyond simply needing to be attached to a mount on the gearbox. I tied it into the transmission subframe. Lastly were the seatbelt mounts. There are four of these in the car for a six point racing harness, two near the hips and two behind the shoulders. The hip mounts hold the lap straps plus the anti-submarine belts. The shoulder harness mounts were made from a long section of bar which I bought out to make a thick walled tube. Welding along the length to the roll hoop, these would provide plenty of strength in the event of an accident. The hip mounts were a little bit less straightforward, I had to cut through the chassis tube at an angle to create horizontal holes. Through these holes went small mounts which I had turned up on a lathe. After these were welded in place, we tapped them to allow bolts to be inserted. To complete the chassis, it needed to be painted to provide a protective coating for the steel. We used this ventilated booth my father built to first sandblast the entire chassis. This removed any grease, oil, scale and rust to leave a clean surface perfect for painting. The sandblasting was a really dirty process, it creates a fine dust which combines with the sand and just gets everywhere. It was really slow going as well, every 20 minutes or so I had to stop and collect all of the sand from the floor, sieve it and then return it to the canister to be reused. The nozzles would actually wear out and become ineffective as well, so to solve that we made a bunch of custom ones on the lathe. After sandblasting the chassis just needed painting. I used a matte black paint and went over the entire chassis with a couple of coats. Finally, the chassis is complete. 
It was a huge amount of work. It took about four months from start to finish in the end, though I was also working on a lot of other things in parallel during that time. I'd love to hear your feedback on what you think of the car so far, so leave a comment with your thoughts. Also, feel free to subscribe if you want to see more of this in the future. I hope you've enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.